In activity 4.11, I'll demonstrate creating table relationships and testing referential integrity. Everything I'm doing in this activity we've covered before, so this will be a good refresher. Starting in 4A City Directory, a database that we copied and modified uh, several activities ago, let's click on Database Tools, click on Relationships, and if you need to, click on Show Table. Select Departments Revised, and then holding down the Control key, select Employees Office and Employees Personal. Add that, and now you have three tables that are visible. All three tables show that the title is only partially displayed. So let's take the middle table and drag it down to create some space. And then let's widen Departments Revised and widen Employees Office. Also drag it down so that you can see all of the fields. And then with the last one, drag it down next to Employees Office and widen it. And we see that's Employees Personal. OK. Now let's create a relationship between Departments Revised and Employees Office. So we'll do this on Department ID. We'll click and drag Department ID and place it on top of Department. And we can validate that because it says 4A Departments Revised Department ID is related to 4A Employees Office on Department. Select Enforce Referential Integrity and notice that the relationship type is one to many. Click Create. Let's reposition that so that it looks better. And we see, we see here indicated by the one and the infinity symbol that this is indeed a one to many relationship, meaning that one unique department in department's revised table relates to zero or more employees in the employee's office table. I'll reposition employees personal. Now, let's create a second relationship from employees office table on employee ID. We'll click and drag that over to the employee ID on employees personal. And we can verify that it's correct because for a employees office employee ID is related to for a employees personal on employee ID. And again, we'll enforce referential integrity and the relationship type is one to one. We'll click create. The one-to-one -one relationship is indicated by the ones on either side of the line. Now, why would you create a one-to-one -one relationship? Many times, uh, people, d database uh, designers, will split a table into two for security reasons. They can let the office employees see this information and only selected people see the personal information. Another reason to split a table might be for performance reasons, if it was really big and really complicated, but this one is not. Uh, a third reason might be to create a lookup table where you have the United States two-letter state abbreviations, like CA, and then a, the full name California, uh, etc. Now with our table relationships completed, let's go ahead and document our database. So let's go up to the tools and click on relationship report. And then let's print that to a PDF. And it chooses the right name for us and we'll save that off. We'll close and save as a report by the same name and there we have our new report object and now we'll close the relationships window and now let's go ahead and test our referential integrity we'll do this by adding a new record and tr uh, deleting or trying to delete um, an existing record so let's go to departments revised and open that Let's go to Employees Office and open that. 
So we have two tabs, two tables open, and we should be focused on employees office. Let's go down and let's add a new record. 332-521, 332-521. And notice the pencil icon shows us that we're in the process of editing a new record, but this information has not been committed to the database yet. Uh, grade one, worksite B-121, title is Mr. Elliot C. Yale, start date is 7-15-15, phone number 432-555-0133, Tit uh, position is intern, department is 50, and the office email is eyale at westlandplains. Gov. All right, now before we hit enter or before we move on, notice we still have the pencil showing, uh, indicating that we're editing this record, that it has not been committed to the database. If I wanted to clear it, I could hit escape at this point, but I don't want to clear it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tab so we'll commit it to the database. But wait a minute, what went wrong here? You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table for a department's revised. Okay, so what's going wrong here? Well, we entered 50 for the department. And if we were to look in departments revised, we'll notice that there is no department 50. Because we checked in force referential integrity, we can't create a record in employee's office, the child table, with a department number that doesn't exist in departments revised the parent table. So that's either uh, a typographical error when we entered 50 or we need to come to the department's revised table and create a new record, a new department with the ID of 50. Since it is a typo, we'll go back and we'll change this to 1. And I'll hit tab on email and watch when I hit the next tab, it commits the record, the pencil icon goes away, and all is well with the world. And that's because the parent has a department ID of one, happens to be animal control. Okay, so that's enforced referential integrity in action when we try to create a child record when there is no parent that it can relate to. Now, let's try and delete so we'll select the city council in the record selector here. I'll hit delete and I'll get an error that says the record cannot be deleted or changed because table 4A employees office includes related records. So we notice here that we have the plus sign and if we click on it, we can see that we have two child records for the city council. And that's why we're unable to delete the records at this, the city council record at this time. And that is another example of the enforce referential integrity. Okay, good enough. So let's close departments revised. Let's close employees office. And that ends this activity.